Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to our Create Mod tutorial series. In the previous episodes, we talked about power generation and how to modify that power by increasing or decreasing speed or changing the orientation. And today we're going to be putting that into practice. First up is a mechanical press. This is going to be the first machine you make with Create and it has a couple of uses. First, we can place it just above the ground or above a depot and we can press items into sheets. We also have it above a basin and this allows us to compact items. Essentially, we'll take one item type, but a whole bunch of them and it'll press it into its more compact form. Let's start with the sheets. And while we're doing that, we're going to take a look at rotation speed and how it affects these machines. So right here, we see this one is rotating very slowly. It is just being powered by an encased fan on top of a magma block. And up here, we have another one that is being powered by eight water wheels. That's a lot of power. But let's take a look at what it does. This one down here, we throw our ingot down and we can see it nice and slowly start to press. And I'm sorry for making you watch that because when we put this one here, it's done. Now, I prefer to put items on a depot because then they're not on the ground. We're not going to have to worry about them despawning and, well, they don't get dirty. Next, let's take a look at packing and some of the problems that we can run into. If we grab these items here and we split our stack of iron nuggets, we'll throw one stack in here. Now, it automatically gets pressed and then gets dropped down into this depot because basins will automatically eject onto belts and depots that are next to them. But Here's the problem that we can run into. If we remove this, we throw our three iron ingots in here, and then we throw our iron nuggets. Uh-oh, it ran twice. I wonder what the problem is. That's right, it actually made a trap door. That's something we have to be careful of. We need to make sure we add a recipe filter. Otherwise, a mechanical press will make any recipe that's available with the components that are inside. So make sure you're using a recipe filter anytime you're doing this. And there's a nice little trick. If we grab our recipe filter and right click, the trick is to find the item that you want to make and come into JEI. Now, even though we don't have any of these in our inventory, we can drag them over and drop them down and onto here. This allows us to filter out all the recipes that we care about and only allow our mechanical press to make these items. That is super neat and super useful. Next up is a mechanical mixer. Mechanical mixer looks a little bit different than the mechanical press. This has a cog in the middle of it. It doesn't have a shaft. So that means we're going to have to power it using cogs. But there's a little bit of a caveat. If this right here is a water wheel running at full speed, we can't just run more cogs over because we're going to get an error. We can see that we have a speed requirement and that our mechanical mixer is not rotating fast enough. So we need to actually remove these, grab ourselves a large cog wheel, throw it up here, and now we're going fast enough to provide enough speed. Now the mechanical mixer has a lot of recipes. We can see there's 170 pages in automated brewing, there are 92 recipes for shapeless crafting, and there are six pages for mixing. But there's one recipe that I think is more important than any other, and that is andesite alloy. Normally for andesite alloy, you need two andesite and two iron or zinc nuggets. But if we just take these guys right here and we drop them into a mixer, it's going to start mixing and it's going to make an andesite alloy with only one of each. That is incredibly useful for early game and you need to be making a mixer and making all of your andesite alloy this way as soon as you can. Now, some of you probably noticed that the mechanical mixer had some extra stuff in its crafting recipes. Here we can see that there's a blaze burner and the words heated. Sometimes they're superheated and other times no heating required. If there's no heating required, we don't need a blaze burner underneath it. But if we do have a recipe that needs heating, we're going to have to make an empty blaze burner, go to the nether, find another fortress, and right click a blaze or a blaze spawner to trap one. But that's not all we have to do. When we look at him, he's looking kind of sad in there. He's just kind of dark and he's not really doing anything. So let's take a look at what happens if we throw these in here to try to make some brass. Wow, nothing's happening. Well, that's because there's a few other items inside of this chest. 
The blaze burner works essentially like a furnace and can be fed the same things that you would put into a furnace. So we can use sticks, we can use coal, and we can use lava. But we can also use slabs and stairs and anything else that would burn. Now the duration that the blaze burner is heating the basin is based off of what item you fed it. They're going to last a little bit longer than if you put it in a furnace, but unlike a furnace, we can actually increase the speed of our mixer and make items even faster, making it more efficient. Now, there was also superheated for some recipes. For that, we're going to need to make a blaze cake and it's going to require a lot of late game automation. But once we've made it, we just right click it onto here and he turns blue, which means he's ready to help us make lava and other late game stuff. That's not covered today, but it will be in a future tutorial. Next up is one of my early game favorites, which is the millstone. The millstone is just like the mechanical mixer needing to be powered with a cogwheel. We place it up here and we're good to go. Now I'm using chutes to transfer items in and out of it. That's not too big of a deal. We can also place a chest down underneath because the chute will either drop items on the ground or place it directly into a chest below it. Now we just grab some items over here and we get to milling. The millstone essentially does one thing. It mills items and then gives us more than what we put in. It essentially makes it so that as we go mining and collect resources, we can get more out of our efforts. So now that we're all done, we started with five wheat. We now have 11 wheat flour. While we only have five crushed iron ore, we're going to be able to process this further to get us even more resources. And that's basically it for the millstone. It helps us turn one resource into many. Now let's take a look at the many uses of the encased fan. Unlike all of the machines we've looked at so far, the millstone, the mechanical press, the mechanical mixer, they don't care about rotation direction that their power is, but the encased fan does. We can see that when we place this one here, there's particle effects moving towards it and we're being pulled that way. If we place this one over here, we see the particle effects are blowing towards us and we are being pushed away. This is really cool. We get to push around mobs and items and anything else we want. And with enough speed, we can actually push items upwards. But unfortunately, this one's spinning just a little too slow. But that's not all that the encase fan does. Let's take a look at bulk washing. All we have to do is grab a water bucket, drop some water right here and right here, and we notice that the particle effects turn from white to blue. That means that any items we place here including this water bucket here, is, are going to start getting washed. But we're also pushing those items away. So let's grab a depot and make this a little bit smoother. We place these right here. We can place our wheat flour on this one, and we can place our crushed iron ore on this one. The nice thing about using a depot is that it doesn't care which direction the wind is coming from. You can either push it in from the side, or you can push it in from the bottom. Now, if we take a look underneath here, get rid of the water source, we actually have just a one wide washing station. This is super neat for when you have limited space in your base and you don't want to build like a big contraption. We just make it one wide and we power it from below and we wash our stuff. That's really cool. Now let's take a look at how many ingots we got from that. 60. And if we throw a crafting table down, we can turn these into ingots and we got six plus six nuggets. So we started with five iron and we now have six and almost a seventh one. And we barely had to put any extra effort into it. That's really cool. But that's not everything we can do with an encased fan. Let's grab this dough and come right over here. And now let's start cooking. We can also do bulk smoking and bulk smelting. That's right. No more needing coal for anything other than blaze burners. We just throw this on here and it'll turn into glass. Now we have 11 bread, and now we have 8 glass. That is really cool, and it saves us so much with having to constantly fuel furnaces. I am so happy that this is in the mod pack, even if it is a little overpowered. We've learned a lot of individual concepts today, so let's put them together and get ourselves some early game ore processing. This is a really simple machine. Let's grab some iron ore and throw it up here. Now we have our basic millstone set up like we did before. Our items are going to drop down in front of this encased fan that is going to start bulk washing. As the items get pushed across, we're going to notice that they finish washing right here. The encased fan continues to push them until they fall into the basin. Then they're automatically turned into ingots, dropped onto a depot, and then we use a regular Minecraft hopper to drop them into a chest. Super, super easy. 
The only real thing to be mindful of is to make sure that the speed of your millstone isn't too fast. Otherwise, you're going to make items faster than your mechanical press can turn them into ingots. The other thing to keep in mind is to make sure that the encased fan isn't too fast. Otherwise, it'll blow the items across and then they'll fall into the basin before they finish getting washed. Now for the speed of this setup, I have the encased fan connected directly to a water wheel and the millstone and the mechanical press are both double the speed of a regular water wheel. That means that the mechanical press by itself will need its own water wheel and then you can share this water wheel between these two. Just make sure not to speed up the fan. And that's it for early game ore processing. It's super easy. It does take up a little bit of space, but I mean, honestly, it looks pretty cool. All right, everybody, that's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Next episode, we're going to be covering item transportation using belts and funnels and chutes and fans, and it's going to be really cool. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content, and I'll see you next time.